So I just filmed my whole review 15 minutes long but I decided to scrap it and start again. So I'm Laura and you're watching Laura Xani and this is the final problem review. So as you can tell I'm a bit calmer because I didn't film it last night. I'm filming it just now, the date goes up because last night I was emotionally <laughs> drained after the episode. So I'm going to tell you about my favourite bits in the episode because there's no point in me reading you through my notes from the cinema because they make no sense. So first favourite bit was the conversation at 221B between Mycroft, Sherlock and John. That whole thing with making um, Mycroft be a client was very interesting and I really liked it. Also Hudders excelled in that scene. I just fucking love Hudders. The whole cinema loved Hover Hudders as well. By the way I went to go see it at the cinema in case you guys were wondering I did go see it at the cinema. So I love that and the whole thing of Sherlock going that's why he stays to me cemented the fact that you know, we might not get John Locke on screen, but we have that line that it was actually said that, I mean, I mean, I have best friends, I have people that I love with dearly with everything in me, but I don't treat my best friends anything like Sherlock treats John, like there's, there's a different level, like, it's just, I mean, John and Sherlock, I compare them to my best friend who's been in a relationship with her boyfriend for like five years and they just, it just is like almost like quite parallel the way they speak about each other and stuff and I'm sitting there going, that's just, hmm, hmm, hmm. So in the regards of John Locke, guys we're never going to get it. There's no point in hoping and wishing. Because see all that hoping and wishing you have? Put that down in words. All those imaginary scenarios that you want the kiss to happen, write them down and upload them and make fan fictions. Because that's where the magic is. Forget the episodes, use the episodes as a starting block for whatever fan fiction you want to write because the episodes are shit. Let's be serious. The cinematography, some of it's beautiful, but it goes in, out, in, out, and flat. So it's kind of like, you know, do what you want to do. Write what you wanted to happen because you know that most of the community is going to sit and read it because we love to see everyone else's ideas. Unpopular opinion regarding John Locke, though. Um, so everyone was going off their nut about how um, instead of saving John, um, Sherlock went to Euros and saved her first. But Sherlock didn't know where the well was, so he had to go to Euros. And I'm sorry, but I would rather him save boy best friend, boyfriend, soulmate, whatever, I would rather save someone that was emotionally in need of saving than saving John. John can look after himself, John can do this, but Euros couldn't and Euros being safe, especially, you know, mentally, I think was a great part and I'm so glad that they wrote it that way. If Euros had just been a total psychopath, then I can understand everyone's, oh no, why did he do that? But I completely agree with Mark and Stephen and how they've wrote that, so. Um, I just want to point out, this see the start of it in Mycroft's house. A, that was not Mycroft sitting there watching the film, that was bloody Mark. Um, if you guys have been following Mark Gatiss for a while, like me, you'll know all this. But if you haven't and you're kind of new and you don't really follow Mark on social media or know him, <laughs> He is the biggest horror fan you've ever met in your life. I love him to pieces. I think it's amazing the amount of horror stuff he's so into. And you can tell that that was totally wrote just so he can be a part of a horror movie and that was just so Mark and so totally him and I just loved it because it was totally not Mycroft but it was nice to see a different side of Mycroft which I thought you got in this episode. Um, the shit he's right part where 
Mycroft was trying to piss Sherlock off so he would shoot him. And the fact that Sherlock didn't even say, well, why should I shoot, why, what about John? It was the instant that he knew what Mycroft was trying to do and he was going to shoot Mycroft. If that ain't love, I don't know what it is. John Locke is a goal. It's, it's, it's happened, but we don't need to see it on screen. Just imagine, I think, I think it's happening. And I think season five could bring it out. If they do season five, at this point in my time, I'll talk about that in a minute, the whole season five thing. But, um, no, yeah, I thought, and I like the whole John going, shit, he's right. I like that. I thought that was really smart. And obviously Sherlock was going to sacrifice himself for the boys. And, uh, yeah. Victor Trevor, well, that was a bloody plot twist and a half, wasn't it? Redbeard wasn't a talk. It was Victor Trevor. I was so happy with that, actually. I really liked that plot twist. I thought it was really good. And, do you know what? I loved the episode. I was going to sit here and I fucking loved it. As a completion to the, the, the show, I just don't want it to end. And uh, the minute I knew that this was the last episode we were going to get for a very long time, if ever, was when the police officer said he's a great man. And Lestrade went, not a great man, a good man. And that was season one all over again. And I thought, that's it. That's it. That's the end of the show. And I started crying because I was like, that's it. This is, it could go on for another half an hour. But that to me was the completion of the show. And I was like, this can't be ending. This cannot be it. I don't care who plays Sherlock and John next. If there's ever another adaptation of it. A modern adaptation, whether it be Nick Jonas, who I flip and love, you guys know me if you've been with my channel, my old channel as well, and this channel, you'll know how in love with Nick Jonas I am, like, seriously. Even if he played John, he would never be the same as Martin. So, this video is not just a review. It's also a thank you to the show. Because as much as everyone's going off, their rockers at Stephen and Mark. I'm pissed off at them too. But right now, I know that we've got fan fiction. I know we've got the fan videos. I know we've got everything else. So all I want to say is a humongous big thank you to Mark Gatiss, Stephen Moffat, Sue Virtue, Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman for giving us, or giving me at least, the best five years of my life. I can't thank them enough for saving me. Um, Sherlock made me realise things about myself that I never thought I would. And the show has just made me laugh, it's made me cry, it's made me feel things I never thought I would feel. And I just humongous big thank you to the cast and the crew and um, to everyone that was involved with season one to four. And if there's never another season, I'm happy in knowing that I had the best five years and I don't regret talking about it and getting laughed at. I don't regret staying up late and not being able to do work the next day because of an episode. And I don't regret any of the videos that I've done correlating with Sherlock. I'll never stop my Sherlock videos. There'll be more Sherlock videos I can think of filming. Don't worry about that. But a thank you once again to Mark, Gatiss, Stephen Moffat, Benedict Cumberbatch, Martin Freeman and Sue Virtue. And particularly a little special shout out to Andrew Scott for playing Moriarty. Because A, you're fucking hot. And B, Moriarty is probably one of my favourite fictional characters next to, next to Mickey Malkovich from Shameless US and Chandler Bing. So, thank you for that. And uh, essentially, as per usual, a huge thank you to Ben Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman both for making me realise that friendships like that really do exist. And uh, also relationships could exist as well. And uh, yeah. So, um, and a big thank you to Sherlock Holmes as well, actually. 
and Arthur Conan Doyle. But a big thank you to Benedict and the way he played Sherlock because uh, mental health wise, I think it was groundbreaking. And yes, the episode might not have been groundbreaking, but series one to four and just the whole concept was groundbreaking, heart-wrenching and amazing and the best five years of my life. So thank you, I love you all and I will see you guys on Thursday with another Sherlock video and it is the Sherlock Holmes playlist which I'm very excited for you guys to see. So I love you all and a big thank you again to everyone that made Sherlock possible and um, if it never happens again, well, it is what it is. See you guys on Thursday. Bye.